What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Well, I did it again. With the holidays just passing, I had a lot of free time on my hand. I found myself in front of my laptop surfing up all sorts of woodworking gadgets. I did find five things that we're going to take a look at today that either I didn't have or I'd never seen before. So let's take a look at these items and see if they'll be a great addition to your workshop. Before we get started, I do want to say a big thank you to all of our viewers. I got over 500 subscribers in this last month, and I'm super grateful for everybody joining us along this woodworking journey. So our first item that we're going to take a look at is something that I've been eyeballing for quite some time. I've been hesitant on whether or not to pull the trigger on this item just because I wasn't quite sure it would be something that I'd actually need on a regular basis. However, with the new year, I plan on building a lot of shop furniture. When I build shop furniture, I tend to use a lot of pocket holes, and that's what this tool is all about. So obviously Craig is the go-to brand for most woodworkers when purchasing a pocket hole jig. And I've had this one for a number of years. Along with this pocket hole jig, I actually purchased this clamp, which does an excellent job of attaching your pocket hole jig to your assembly table. Now my experience with Craig clamps has been quite positive. I really like their ease of adjustability and their ability to quickly clamp something down to your work surface. If I did have one complaint about these clamps though, it's these little rubber pads that go over the edge of your handle. Now these tend to slide off and they're really a pain to get back on. But this isn't the clamp that we're gonna be talking about today. Before I show you this clamp, we need to drill some pocket holes. So let's do that right now. Now that we have those pocket holes drilled out, it's time to take a look at the clamp we want to talk about today. And that's this right angle clamp from Craig. Let's unbox this and see how it works. So if we take a closer look at this clamp, you can see that it has kind of a unique design. It's got a clamping pad on one side, as well as a metal rod on the other. If we look at the handle of the clamp, you can see that it's got a little knob here that allows you to adjust the tension higher or lower. If we look at the handle of this new clamp, you can see that it has a nice hard rubber grip, which is great. It doesn't have these little covers which tend to fall off with just a little bit of pressure. If we go back to our workpiece where we just drilled these four pocket holes, you can really see the advantage of this new clamp. You simply place it into one of those pocket holes and clamp it down. Now that we have this clamp in place, it's acting like a third hand. It's holding that joint together so you can easily drive in your pocket hole. So one of the questions I had before purchasing this clamp was whether or not you need more than one clamp. Now for me, I think one clamp will do just fine. You can use this to clamp your two work pieces together, and once you drive in your first screw, that acts as a clamp by itself. So unless you're doing some major projects where you have a lot of boards that you need to join together, I think one clamp will do just fine. So if you're like me and you got a ton of shop furniture to build because your shop's a mess, or you're a cabinet maker and you need to hold two pieces of wood together, this thing might just do the trick. Well, that covers our first item. Now this next item I am super stoked about. I found this while Googling hardcore. I mean, I Googled so deep it put my ass to sleep. Deep, so deep, so deep, put her butt to sleep. Now one of my favorite things to make is tables. Now if you've ever made a tabletop, you know that it can be quite difficult to keep all those boards aligned and perfectly flat. Now typically we use calls to straighten out our tabletops. We'll place a call on top of the tabletop and a call on the bottom. Then we'll squeeze it down with clamps and force that tabletop to be perfectly flat. Now I have a variety of calls in my workshop and I store them back here. They're typically made out of hardwood and I place some tape over them, place them on the workpiece and clamp it down. I also have this larger call system that I regrettably purchased a few years back that tends to bow when you clamp it down. So this next item we're going to take a look at today I think might solve all of my calling problems. At least I hope. So you know I love Bessie and that's who makes this next tool. This is a Bessie edge clamp. Let's unbox this and take a look at it. So this little edge clamp has got a pretty simple little design. It's got a soft pad on the end of it and it's got a wooden handle that allows you to move the clamp up and down. On the side of it, it's got another clamp that will actually be used to clamp it to your other clamp. Let's go take a look and see how we attach this to the clamp. So attaching this clamp really couldn't be easier. Today, we're gonna to be attaching this to a DeWalt clamp, just to show that this can be used with other brands. Now, all you need to do is simply unscrew this knob right here until there's enough room for your clamp to fit in. Then you simply slide it over your clamp and lock it down by twisting that knob. Once it's locked in place, it's ready to be used. 
Now let's use this butcher block to show you how this clamp is used. Now let's pretend like this is a tabletop that has a bunch of individual boards that you're clamping together. Now once you've applied the horizontal pressure to the boards, you can then apply vertical pressure by twisting the knob on the Bessie clamp. So if you're gluing up a tabletop or something like that where you have two boards where the seam isn't exactly perfectly aligned, you can apply some actual vertical pressure to that board and force those two pieces of wood together. Also, if there's a bow in your tabletop, you can apply that vertical pressure and get that bow out. But even better than that, you can apply multiple clamps to the side clamps and make sure that you have a completely flat tabletop. But you may be asking, what clamps can you apply this edge clamp to? So I've got three clamps here that each have a different shaft. This shaft right here is completely flat. This one's got a bowed shaft, and this one's even got a smaller bowed shaft. And this clamp will attach to each one of these. But that's not the only function you can use this clamp for. Let's take a look at another function of this clamp. Now what if you want to apply some edge banding to some plywood or some end grain? Now typically I use something like this band clamp from Rockler, and this does a great job. However, with this Bessie edge clamp, you can apply a lot more pressure to that edge banding. So with the versatility of this clamp and the ability to use this clamp on many other brands of clamps, this thing is actually going to get a lot of use in my shop. So I bought four of them. If you're planning on doing a lot of glue ups, you may consider buying more than one of these. Well, that's two items down and only three more left to go. Before we move on to our third item, I ask you to do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small growing channel. Also, for any of the tools that we're featuring in today's videos, I'm going to leave links in the description below so you can go check out these tools for yourself. Now let's go check out our third item. So if you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that I've been super impressed with the types of tools that Milescraft has been putting out recently. In a recent video, I featured this Grabber Plus, and this thing is amazing. That's why when I saw this next tool, I knew I had to have it. So this next tool may look like the gripper made by Microjig, but I assure you that's not what this is. This is the Grabber Pro from Milescraft, and it's just a fraction of the price of the gripper. Let's get into this box and see what it's all about. So this is what comes inside the box. It comes with the Grabber Pro, along with the 8th inch thin rip attachment. So right off the bat, you may be asking, what's the difference between this Grabber Pro and the gripper made by Microjig? Well, let's take a look. So here they are side by side. If we look at the frame of the gripper, you can see that it's considerably shorter than the Grabber Pro. If we look underneath these two tools, you can see they have a very similar structure. The Grabber Pro has a support wing just like the gripper. There's also three support bars on the Grabber Pro and the gripper that run down the length of the entire tool. The Grabber Pro, however, has the eighth inch support leg that can support your workpiece if you're doing some thin rips, they're just an eighth inch thick. One key difference between these two tools is the Grabber Pro actually has one of the support legs that runs along the length of the back of the tool. That way it gives support to your workpiece as you're pushing it through the table saw. That's something that the gripper just doesn't have. Lastly, let's take a look at the handles of these two tools. If we look at the micro jig gripper, it's got a straight up and down handle that feels pretty good on your hand. However, with the Grabber Pro, it's got a very ergonomic handle made of soft rubber that feels great as you're pushing your workpiece through your table saw. As you can see from this angle here, it's even got finger notches for your hand. You really won't get an understanding for how comfortable this tool is until you run it through the table saw. And that angled handle really does make all the difference. Well, Milescraft rarely disappoints in my opinion. Now that we've looked at three items, let's go ahead and take a look at our fourth item. Let's talk about finishing for a bit. So when I first started woodworking, I thought that sandpaper was the only way to finish up your work pieces. However, when I got into hand tools, I realized that there's a couple other ways you can do it. In fact, there are some ways that you can get an even better finish than you can with sandpaper. If you have a really sharp plane, a plane will leave a smoother surface than you could ever get with sandpaper. But if you're not ready to take the leap to use hand tools to get you your finished surfaces, there are some small tools like these small card scrapers that will leave you with a beautiful finish. It truly is amazing the first time you use a card scraper to see how smooth that surface is. Let's use these old card scrapers and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So my original card scraper that I've used for years is this card scraper made by DFM. Now a card scraper is pretty easy to use. 
all you do is give even support to your card scraper as you're pushing it down your workpiece. Now when you push it down your workpiece, it'll scrape off just a little bit of wood from each pass that you make. You can see the shavings come off as I push it down the workpiece. And when I feel the top of that wood, it feels very similar to the way a 400 grit sandpaper would feel. So I've used card scrapers for a number of years now. However, when using a card scraper, you need to make sure that that surface is completely flat. There are some situations, however, where your surface may not be flat, and that's where this next tool comes into play. Let's take a look at it. So once again, when I was surfing the web, I came across this card scraper set that I'd never seen before. It's got a lot of unique shapes that I think will be great when I'm dealing with surfaces that may not be entirely flat. So this card scraper set comes with four uniquely shaped scrapers, along with a sharpening tool. I'm a little hesitant to use the sharpening tool as I'm not quite sure how to sharpen scrapers yet. It comes with your standard square scraper, it comes with a concave and convex scraper, it comes with a chamfered egg scraper, as well as one that looks like a French curve. Now the jury's still out on whether or not I'll use all these uniquely shaped card scrapers. However, it's this one card scraper that really intrigued me. It's this nice rounded profile that I thought might be useful in my shop. Now for me, I'm getting ready to build some dining room chairs. And it's the seat profile that really scares me. In order to get that seat bottom, I know that I'll have to have some subtle curves in the bottom. And this thing right here, I think might help me smooth out that surface after I use a carver on it. Not to mention, I kind of have a two for one in some of these card scrapers. Now if you saw my previous video, you saw that I was hesitant to purchase a metal French curve, and this is kind of like a metal French curve, so I guess I got one now. Now I will have to say, after running my finger on all those scrapers, I did find a couple of burrs. Now maybe that's why they include the card scraper sharpener, however I'm not familiar with how to sharpen card scrapers yet, so that's something to consider before you take a look at those items. Well that's four items down and only one more item left to take a look at. This next item has everything to do with precision. Now I've got a lot of precision tools in my workshop, but this thing is completely analog and that's why I got it. Let's take a look at some of the precision tools I have in my shop. So this little suitcase is one of the best purchases I ever made. Let me show you exactly what's inside this box. So the reason I like this box so much is because it has all of the digital measuring devices that I use on a regular basis. It's got an angle finder for a table saw, it's got a depth gauge for a router table, it's got some digital calipers, as well as a digital compass. The reason I have all these digital measuring devices is often because I need to find out the actual measurement of something in particular. But a lot of times, I don't need to know the specific measurement of something, I just need to know how wide something is so I can transfer it to something else. And that's why I purchased this next item. Now this is kind of an old school item and it's something that I think I'll actually use when I'm doing things like dovetails. And that is this divider compass. Let's go take a look at it. So there's a couple of reasons why I purchased this compass. First off, this thing is fairly inexpensive, so I was super pleased about that. Secondly, I wanted something that was very easy to use. And this is a spring-loaded compass that has a little knob on the side that you twist one way to open it and twist the other way to close it. Another reason why I wanted to get this was because I want to do some hand cut dovetails in the near future. And this allows me to walk the line across my workpiece and figure out where those dovetails need to be. Also, this tool allows me to easily transfer a measurement from one workpiece to another, and that's something that I couldn't easily do without a tape measure before. So I know this isn't the most exciting tool in the world, however it is a tool that I think will get some use in my shop. So I'm going to go put this next to my coping saw and hopefully I'll get some dovetails made. Well that will do this for today folks, that's five more items that I think might be a valuable addition to your shop. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. Until next time, take care as always. So this next... Uh.